Who doesn't love a tea party filled with tasty treats? Welcome! Today we're going to be having a British afternoon tea party and it's going to be filled with DIYs so you can make this in the comfort of your own home. We're going to be making our savory sandwiches, our scones, clotted cream, yes, even our own sugar cubes. We have a lot to do so let's get started. So we're going to be making some sugar cubes and you can use brown sugar or granulated white sugar like I have here. Uh, Mariam was helping me so we have two cups in the bowl and then we're adding about three tablespoons of water. You're going to mix that until you get the consistency of play-doh. It should easily stick together and you should be able to compact it so press it down on a flat surface in a square or rectangular container make sure the container like I have has parchment paper on the bottom and that you've made sure you grease the pan before you put the parchment paper that way it makes it easy when you're removing the cubes so make sure you have a steady hand and you cut as precise as possible because you want your cubes to be even so I'm using a clean knife to cut along the length of the sugar after pressing in the sides and the top of the sugar to make sure there are no spaces and that the sugar doesn't fall apart. So you just need a little bit of patience but it really isn't that hard. Once you have cut the length of the sugar, if there are any uneven edges, you can cut them off or remove them. And then I'm cutting horizontally. And then we're going to put this in the oven for an hour at 250 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit and then that's going to cause them to be dry and hard and they should break off in pieces uh, easily and you'll have your beautiful homemade sugar cubes which you can customize in advance if you wanted to you could have added vanilla or food coloring for some sort of theme you can store them for weeks in advance but they just bring back memories of my childhood and you know they're really expensive in stores nowadays so it's cost effective to make it yourself classic British clotted cream I have one pint of heavy whipping cream proudly made in North Carolina and this is a shallow pirate's dish we're gonna pour this in here put it in our preheated oven and keep the oven on overnight for 12 hours come back and we should have our British clotted cream This is the clotted cream out of the oven going into the fridge and I'm just using some saran wrap to cover it before it sits in the fridge for another eight hours. <laughs> so the following day you take your clotted cream out the refrigerator. It's been eight or nine hours. You drain off the liquid and you can use this liquid for other cooking. You peel off the crust and underneath is the most luxurious thick cream and it tastes somewhere between ice cream and heavy whipped cream and it's so delicious and will go great on your scones or scones okay getting ready to make our scones and if you want to see the exact recipe you're gonna to have to check my blog in the future make some butter good old-fashioned unsalted butter so save yourself some work and make the dough the night before Put it in the refrigerator and then you'll have your fresh dough to roll out and cut. If you don't want your scones to be too hard, you want to avoid over kneading it. So try to keep them nice and flaky if possible by not kneading it too much. So these uh, biscuit cutters came in handy. And I'm just here brushing on a little bit of egg and milk on it and that gives it a nice golden color. Nothing like fresh baked scones on the table. Mmm. For the sandwiches, it's all about having variety. So the first sandwich I made was an egg salad sandwich. Really simple. So for the next two sandwiches, we're going to need some whipped cream cheese or regular cream cheese. And I'm going to add some dill to it and also the zest of a lemon or lime. Mix it well. It goes really well with any sandwiches where you're using fish or on a regular, plain, simple cucumber salad. 
um, or sandwich. So I'm just adding that uh, cream cheese mixture and then I'm going to add a layer, one thin layer of cucumber slices. And it's really simple, but it's very delicious. Then I decided to uh, make it with a brioche bread. And so I'm cutting off the crust. Oh my God, this brioche bread was so delicious. It reminded me of cake. You guys know I have a sweet tooth. So because this is sort of fancy, we cut off the crust. You can give the children the crust or you can give your husband or you can munch on it before your party starts. So now we're cutting the bread in two. And then I'm going to cut that in two again. So we have almost like four little soldiers. Very dainty, very elegant. And for the salmon, I'm working with some really good brown bread. For the smoked salmon sandwiches, I'm using the same cream cheese and dill lime zest mixture and using uh, a slice of cucumber on top of that before adding the smoked salmon, which is so pretty and so delicious. And then just for better presentation, I added a sprig of the dill on top. You could also use some piped cream cheese on the top of that if you wanted. For the chicken salad sandwich, tongue twister there, <laughs> I started off with fresh chicken breast the night before I boiled it. You could also have baked it and then shredded it and seasoned it, added some mayo, some mustard, salt and pepper. I also added some cut grapes, fresh cut grapes to it just for that contrast in color and also taste. It's also nice if you had cranberries, you could use that too. So pack it in, but not too thick. And then I added a layer of watercress because that gives it a kind of peppery flavor and really helps enhance the chicken sandwich. So cover it up again and off go the crusts yet again. So before we can eat, we have to set the table. So I was so happy with this find and I hope you watch my last video to see my all things tea haul. And yeah, I just couldn't get over this French china that I had found. Anyway, we need to set the table. I'm starting off with a clean white tablecloth, some fresh flowers in the center, roses, and cleaning off the cutlery properly, placing them in their rightful position. As you can see, I have a dessert plate. Uh, it's much smaller than a dinner plate. Setting the table and then we can eat. Ooh. So this is what she really looks like in the kitchen. I'm about to get my face done for afternoon tea. So, welcome to my afternoon tea party. Who's ready to eat? Let's get the children at the table and let's get started. My kids here, Mariam and Khalid, <laughs> have given me permission to give them a little bit of an etiquette class as we do this afternoon tea. So let's start off, son number one, by seating your sister. So you just pull out the chair for her. Thank you. Yes, and then you can help her scooch in, Khalid. <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> Maybe the first thing, let's say grace. Let's say grace. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for what we are about to receive. May we be truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we all have tea in front of us, and we're going to each pour ourselves a cup of tea. I have my cup and saucer and my teaspoon facing outward. So I just wanted to show you the proper way British hold a teacup is like this. You have your thumb on the top, you have your index finger going through it, and your three fingers on the bottom balancing the cup. So there's no need to do this. This looks kind of pretentious, but it's also French perhaps, um, and not really English. So just your thumb, your index finger, and your three fingers balancing the teacup. Okay, so. First thing I'm going to do is put my strainer because traditionally it would be, or if you're going somewhere fancy, you would have loose tea. If you're at home or you're at a regular place, you would have tea bags. But 
We are going to be fancy today, so we have our tea strainer, and I have my black currant English tea, and it would normally have tea leaves that would go through here and catch, the tea strainer would catch the leaves. I'm going to fill my cup three quarters of the way, not too full, just in case I wanted to add cream and sugar. So in this case, I'm only going to add some sugar and no cream sugar cubes. So I'm adding two with my tongues and that's it. Then to stir my cup, I'm not going to turn it around like this and make a whole bunch of noise. Um, that is not the most elegant way to do it. The best way to do it would be just to go back and forth from 6 to 12 making minimum noise. So you can just go back and forth and that will help dissolve the sugar cubes. Now, if you wanted to add cream, this would be a good time to do that. And when you want to let the excessive tea fall from your teaspoon, you're not going to do this. That makes a lot of ruckus and is noisy to your neighbors. Instead, you're just going to let it drip on the side and then put your teaspoon back in its rightful place. Are you gonna add milk? Yeah. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> what is wrong with you? It makes no sense. Why, I'm doing <laughs> Why are you so complex when you're touching his skin? You're like. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's not! <laughs> This is why we don't do this now. <laughs> See if you can hold your teacup the right way. Yeah, very good, Mariam. And Karine Khalid. Don't spill it, don't spill it. Yeah, balance it well. And the thing is to look into the teacups. It's kind of freaky if you're drinking tea like this. <laughs> you should look into the cup. As you drink. Tastes good though, doesn't it? That black carrots. It does taste good. It's very uncomfortable for you because you're left handed. If you want to try it with your left hand, Jeez, go ahead and see. Yeah, <laughs> you're holding it with your right hand. No, it's a little awkward. That's your left hand? hand. Your left hand. hand. <laughs> it looks weird. <laughs> My wrist Which one are you feet. comfortable with? I don't know. It's too damn small. <laughs> Well, you can't. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what we have on the table. We have some finger sandwiches, some scones, and some dessert pastries. We also have some more pastries here, some parfaits, some chocolate and Nutella covered strawberries. Okay, so the first sandwich we have is a simple cucumber sandwich with uh, lemon and dill cream cheese filling, an egg sandwich, a uh, chicken salad sandwich with some celery and grapes, and the round, uh, round sandwich is an open face smoked salmon sandwich. Um, English scones, two types of preserves. This is blackberry, orange marmalade, and this is some clotted cream. And these pastries. These beautiful fruit and cream filled tarts came from Whole Foods. So Khalid and Mariam, usually the finger sandwiches are what you start with first. So you start at the bottom tier because that's the savory. So, and you can use your hands to pick it up. You don't need a knife and fork to pick it up. Use your hands. If you want to use a knife, that's up to you. But usually you just use your hands to pick it up. And for the scones, or scones, as I hear is the correct way to say it, you don't need a knife either. You should be able to break it open. So I'm going to take my 
preserve and put it on the plate, on your plate in front of you. So each person has a clean knife that they'll use and serve it on their plate in front of them. So you don't use the same dirty knife and you make sure that you put it on your plate and serve yourself. And then you pick up your scone and go ahead and apply it to it. So as you see, I did not go directly from the container onto the scone. I just put it on my plate first. <laughs> <laughs> and that broke, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna put my clotted cream on there. And then I'm going to enjoy. It actually really tastes delicious. It really tastes delicious. It tastes almost like, um, it doesn't taste like a biscuit. It's a little sweeter than a biscuit. And it almost tastes a little like pastry cake-ish. All right, your turn, Mario. Clotted cream. Start, usually you want to start with your jam first, but I guess you can put the clotted cream on it first if you want. It's kind of slimy. It's salmon. You don't like the salmon? Mm -hmm. All right. What do you do when you don't like a sandwich or don't like something on your plate? Oh, no, I'm gonna finish it. It's just. Just fill salmon, him. salmon with cream cheese, and it's all cold. It's all ready to make. So it would have been better for you if it was hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this doesn't go right. It's classic British sandwiches, Khalid. Mm -hmm. Is that you know why they're so? <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, try the next sandwich then. I guess Khalid did not like the salmon. Khalid said that's salmon. what salmon. He's so upset. <laughs> See Khalid's take on a simple cucumber and dill cream cheese sandwich. Let's see if you like that better. <laughs> mm. What is this problem? We don't eat dill often. It doesn't taste right to me, man. When was the last time you cooked with dill, man? <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, Maria, what sandwich did you try? No elbows on the table, by the way. No elbows on the table. This is the first one to do it. No elbows on the table. All right, go ahead and try. What's what, what's that on your plate? Um, I think it's chicken and cucumber. Yeah, that's or no. celery. Chicken and celery. Yeah. Chicken salad. So it's got chicken and grapes and some celery, but it's also got a layer of watercrest. So let's see how that goes for you. I think I'm messing up because it has grapes. What? You don't like grapes? I should put water. This isn't what you made. You didn't give daddy this. Daddy liked it all. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not bad, right? After all of that. <laughs> what are you making? Don't talk with food in your mouth, but I'm eating the chicken salad sandwich. Fine. I like it. I like it. And your dad liked it.
<laughs> talk about posture. Wait, how could we do this and not talk about posture, how important posture is? Always sit with your, you know, shoulders high, don't slouch. Bring the food towards you. Never move towards the food like this, eating. You want to move the food towards you. Always elbows off the table. Yeah, and always, you know, when you're sitting in front of someone, engage, look at them in the eye. You know, you're not looking down or away. <laughs> so, yeah, good posture is important, not just for sitting at the table but it's important when you go for an interview it's important wherever you go because that's how they see whether you have confidence or not or whether you carrying yourself with some level of gravitas or okay so it was clear Khalid was not a fan of the spread that had the cream cheese with dill in the dill in particular he just did not like that flavor because he wasn't accustomed to it he's more accustomed to Caribbean food or American food or Vietnamese food which is what we usually cook but they did like the desserts and um, they also weren't very keen on the texture of the smoked salmon which I guess is more of an adult type of food um, so in the future I'm thinking of doing a more southern take or American take on English breakfast and instead of uh, scones have hot biscuits and instead of going through the work of making clotted cream we'll just have butter which they're accustomed to but it was really nice to bond with the kids and to be able to teach them a little bit of etiquette and reinforce manners so that's a good thing should I have the one with the fruit oh actually I'm gonna eat my parfait soon but I would like one of these and technically, this is also my birthday. So it actually happens to be my birthday tomorrow. So this is also an excuse to have something nice for my birthday because I didn't want a big birthday party. I didn't want us to go out. We go out frequently enough. And how do you wipe your mouth? Green? How do you wipe your mouth? Dab. Yeah. Yeah. You don't wipe, you dab. Really, Maria? <laughs> Sit up. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You know what? I, I didn't like that. It was fine. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would like to thank our middle child Kareem age 17, Mariam 16 and our oldest son here Khalid age 18. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took away some tips. <sighs> <laughs> we saw this outro about five times, I'm sorry. <laughs>